This video will cover unknown angles topic 5, auxiliary lines. Auxiliary lines um, are lines that are added to a figure to help in a proof or to solve for unknown angles. The auxiliary line is always parallel to the given lines and are always represented by dotted. Um, so here in this diagram off to the right you can see this picture. We have parallel lines here and here. And then this auxiliary line, the dotted line, was drawn in so that we can help ourselves find the measure of angle W by first finding the measure of angle E, finding the measure of angle F, and then adding them together. So we're going to see an example down here, uh, number 17. Our goal is to find the measure of angle 1. So I can see it's very difficult to find the measure of angle 1 because I don't have a just, just a nice Z, I don't have any um, alternate exterior angles or corresponding angles. So I'm going to first start by drawing in an auxiliary line. And again, it's dotted and parallel to the line above it and below it. I'm going to split angle 1 up into two variables, x and y. If I look at finding angle x first, I notice that I have this backwards c going on. And I can see, again, parallel lines give me some angles that are, that are supplementary. These two angles here, x and 144, are same side interior. And these angles equal 180 degrees because, again, they're supplementary. That means I can set up an equation. x plus 144 equals 180. Therefore, when I subtract from both sides, I end up with x equals 36. My next step is to find the measure of angle y. So here I'm looking at this picture, and I can see a z formed out of my auxiliary line and one of the given parallel lines. A Z, remember, gives us alternate interior angles. And we know that they are congruent. So I know that Y is equal to 56. Now my last and final step here was to find the measure of angle 1, which is composed of X and Y together. So all I need to do is sum the two numbers for X and Y. So I have X plus Y gives us the measure of angle 1. 36 plus 56 gives us the measure of angle 1. So then the measure of angle 1 is 92. In number 18, we have a similar problem. I see that I have measure of angle 1 up top. That's our goal. That, that's what we're trying to find here. I also have 96 somewhere in the middle there, and I have 130 down at the bottom. So I'm going to draw in an auxiliary line to help me solve this problem. Some students often want to take that 96 and simply split it in half and say that this angle up here, x, and this angle down here, y, are identical. They're congruent. However, that's not the case. Um, we don't know that it's a bisector. That auxiliary line I drew in is not necessarily an angle bisector, so I cannot assume that the angles are congruent. But what I can do is first find y. And I can do that by looking at my auxiliary line and one of the given parallel lines. Here again, I have another case of same side interior angles. And remember, we just said that they add to 180. So I'm going to take y and 130 and sum them to 180, showing me that y is 50 degrees. So I'm going to write 50 right in here. Now, in order to find x, I know that 50 and x give me a total value of 96 because the angle that I split up was 96 degrees in the first place. So I have x plus 50 equals 96. Therefore, x is 46. Now, unlike the last problem, I'm not going to add x and y again together. x and y would again just give me this middle angle of 96. My goal here is to find out the measure of angle 1. So if I look at my diagram, I'm going to use yellow now to highlight this a little bit. I see angle 1 and x that make a nice z here. Remember with a z we have alternate interior angles. Therefore the measure of angle 1 is identical or congruent to the measure of angle x which was 46 degrees. So here final answer measure of angle 1 is 46 degrees.